Whatever he leads us to, he will empower us to walk through with joy and with peace because he's with you in it. And anything he leads you into, he will lead you out of. What's up, y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth, and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about the real things because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. And this week, the real talk is about the hard things. I walked through a lot of hard things this week, mostly involving spiritual testing and warfare. And before you get too weirded out by the term spiritual warfare, I just want to say plainly that the enemy is real, but we always have victory in Jesus. There's nothing he can do to us or say to us that trumps the authority we have in Jesus to resist him. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. That's a promise. So there's nothing to fear. But the fact is the enemy is real and so are his demons. And the reality is that there is evil. There is darkness, but the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. And we have that light in us when we take Jesus at his word that he lives in us when we believe, lay down our lives and take up his instead and make him Lord. So really we have nothing to fear, but we are going to face the enemy. And anytime the enemy comes at you, you are guaranteed a victory. If you believe what Jesus said, that you have authority, you have authority over darkness. Now I am not an expert in spiritual warfare by any means, but I can tell you that thinking about the enemy is not the best thing to do. The best thing to do is to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, regardless of your circumstance, and trust him that whatever he leads you into, he will walk you through and you will be victorious over. Now, when you actually have to take some ground and resist the enemy, it has to do with understanding that he is a liar, that anything he says to you is going to be a lie about you or about God. And so when you know the voice of your shepherd, your savior, your Jesus, when you have that intimate relationship with God, when you're walking with him, walking in the spirit, understanding that everything he says to you is gentle, loving and kind and even when he is firm with you it's because he disciplines those he loves but it will never be condemning if he speaks firmly to you it will never be cruel even when he speaks firmly he speaks in kindness and I say these things before I get into the story I want to tell you because these are the crucial elements to remember after I tell you the story this week, I walked through a number of different spiritual attacks. I heard the voice of the enemy, which was basically opposition to everything that I have heard from the Lord in his word, to my heart, and anything that's been confirmed from him through the people he's placed in my life that I've recognized through the gifts of wisdom and discernment that he's given me. So I heard opposition from the enemy. I had physical pain that came with lies and opposition. And in the middle of a sweet, intimate encounter with the Lord, I actually experienced a block, for lack of a better way to describe it, that kept me from experiencing the sweetness and goodness of the Lord in that moment. Now, in that circumstance, specifically in this encounter with Jesus, it took me a little while to figure it out because I'd never experienced spiritual attack like that before. And I wanted to be surrendered to anything God was saying, even if I didn't understand it. Proverbs 35 and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So I wanted to be surrendered to that. So that was the first thing I did, even though I was really upset in the moment. And just as a side note, I want to explain very quickly what was going on. I know the voice of my shepherd because I know his character, because I know the word. And I have a history with the Lord that has been established over eight years of walking by the Spirit and being immersed in the word of God and in prayer. So when I was in this moment with the Lord and I felt this block and I heard a voice, it was confusing because I was with the Lord when I heard the voice, but the voice did not sound like the Lord. And this is why I came to the conclusion that I did, that it was absolutely not the Lord. And this is how you can know as well. Number one, I did not have any peace. The Lord's words always have peace attached to them. His words carry peace. So even if he is rebuking you or speaking firmly to you in discipline or saying something you don't want to hear, you will still experience his peace. And it's up to you to surrender to that or not. This voice I heard, there was no peace. 
the second reason I knew it wasn't him was that this voice that I heard did not draw me closer to God. It actually attempted to repel me from him. The voice of the Lord will always draw you deeper into intimacy with him. And on that note, it also caused me to doubt who I know God to be, which is a clear sign that that is not the Lord talking to you. The third thing is that it wasn't gentle or loving. It was not spoken in a tone that I recognized as reflecting the character of God. God's voice will always reflect his character. Another reason, which is debatable, is that it felt like the voice was in my head. And when the Lord speaks, I hear him in my heart. And I know that's hard to explain and it might be hard to understand. But for those who know the difference, that's what I experienced. And lastly, and I find this fascinating, is that when I finally surrendered to God, saying, Lord, if this is you, I don't understand it, but I yield to you. Please speak it to me again with a tone I recognize. And y'all, he didn't do it then, but I brought this up after doing that to one of my closest friends who knows the Lord intimately like I do. And she gave me her perspective, which was most of these points, which I was able to see clearly and agree with from what I know and know of the Lord. And her perspective gave me clarity. Not only that, but in discussing this with my friend, the power of community was at work here because my clarity through her perspective gave her clarity on something that she had experienced, which was literally the exact same words I had heard, but towards her circumstance. And I'm sorry, I'm not explaining the details here, but I have to keep that personal for now. The point is, she heard the same words in regards to her circumstance, and she was equally as disturbed and upset, but she'd been hearing it for months and had never brought it up. So me bringing this up, she confirmed that those were the exact same words, and these are the things she'd been experiencing too. And she pointed out in that, that the enemy is predictable. He uses old tricks. He doesn't have any new ones. And the reason why I didn't recognize this is because I hadn't seen that trick yet, but she has. So speaking to her, I was able to identify with an old trick. Now the first couple of points could have made it obvious, right? But these last few just kind of solidified everything. So I wanted to share that with you to encourage you that not every voice you hear is from the Lord and those who are wise and discerning will want the true voice of the Lord and will not just take any voice they hear and run with it because we're not just hearing from the Lord as his children. We're also hearing our own thoughts and we're hearing from the enemy as well. In my experience, the voice of the enemy is accusatory. It's against you. It's against God. It comes against your identity. It comes against his character. It comes against the promises God's given you over your life. It comes against your family. It comes against those you love. It's cruel. It makes you fear punishment. Those are not attributes of Jesus' voice. The Holy Spirit does not speak like that. But if it's your voice, if you don't know your identity in the Lord, if you don't know the truth of who God says you are and the truth of who God says he is, then you may confuse the enemy's voice for your voice and the enemy may use your voice against you. I am statements are statements of identity. I am useless. I am too much. I am not enough. Those are lies of the enemy, but they're I am statements, meaning the enemy has told you through circumstances, through lies, that that is who you are. And so you've agreed with him and now you are lying to yourself. But when you know the truth, you can replace those statements with I am or identity statements that are based in the truth of who you are. I am valuable beyond measure. I have purpose. God knows every day of my life and I have value to him because he purchased me on the cross. I am not too much because he made me purposefully, intentionally. He knit me together in my mother's womb. He knew exactly what he was doing when he made me. And while my personality may seem too much or I may need to mature in some areas and let the Lord refine my character, I am not too much because the Lord made me like this. And the statements you know of for yourself may be completely different than these. I'm just using these three as an example. But how about the third one? I am not enough. I am more than enough because Jesus lives in me. Jesus empowers me, Jesus leads me, and he's already given me everything I need for life and godliness. He richly supplies my every need. I am enough and I always have enough. I am more than enough because I have him and I have more than enough. 
because he is my provider and in him I lack nothing. So what is the missing link here between the I am statements that come from lies, replacing them with truth and seeing them make a difference? It's trust and obedience. Do you trust the Lord to be who he says he is, to do what he says he will do? Do you actually trust him as your provider? Have you given him room to prove that he's your provider? Has he asked you to trust him to be your provider? Have you taken the risk and obeyed to let him show you that he is truly your provider? Again, side note, this is just one example, but this is important. I came across a passage in Isaiah this week. You may have seen it on my Instagram stories but it was so powerful, I wanna share it again. And it has to do with what we're talking about. Isaiah 48, verses 17 and 18. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God. Catch the I am statement he makes. Who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Even though he's turning this to a negative, like, if only you had. He's speaking to the children of Israel in context. But we can learn from this by looking at this and choosing to not do as they did. They did not pay attention to his commands, but we can. And that looks like obedience and trust. So if, if we pay attention to the Lord's commands, if we let him teach us what is best for us, if we let him direct us in the way we should go, which means trusting him and seeking his purposes and will and timing and direction in the secret place, in the word, in prayer, and in meditative prayer, then we will have peace like a river and righteousness like the waves of the sea. I don't know about you, but in the world we live in right now, peace is a valuable commodity and it's not something we can buy. So let this be my final encouragement to you. Learn who the Lord is, truly learn his character and then trust him in it, take him at his word because in seeking to find out who he is, you'll learn who you are. When you learn who you are, knowing who he is, you'll be able to stand up against any lie the enemy comes at you with and you'll know the voice of your shepherd, just like Jesus promises you in John chapter 10. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it with a friend who needs it. If you want to support this ministry in any way, there are links in the description box below and in the link in my Instagram bio. I love you and I'm praying for you. Have a great week.